All right, Miss Feather is home from school. Let's get on this, shall we? <sighs> rough day, rough day. So, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna be talking about The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This book was the story of a woman named Esther, who is a very successful writer, and she starts off this book as a writer's intern for a woman's fashion magazine, and she's staying in a very prestigious hotel with other girls who are in the same program as her. Esther has always been very successful throughout her life. She has, um, she's gotten a scholarship into this program, and everything that she's worked for, she has achieved up until this point in her life. But as she's at this writer's intern, she starts to be overwhelmed by the stifling um, pressures of society. And so we start to see her slowly slipping into a mental breakdown. She is experiencing suicidal depression and she doesn't really know what to do with these feelings that she's experiencing. Um, she does try to start writing, but when she starts writing, she finds that she can't get the words out that she wants to say. This novel is a portrait of a woman experiencing suicidal depression. Unlike Rose, I actually enjoyed how this is a work of literary fiction and the writing style is very stream of conscious. So the novel is actually written as a flashback and Esther does recover from the mental breakdown. It's not a spoiler. In the first chapter, she's talking about how she's taking care of her child and how she's recovering from her mental breakdown, but she still has trinkets from the past when she looks back on the past time. And so the rest of the story is kind of her revealing her thoughts about this time and reflecting on the past. Especially when she gets to the more gritty parts of her breakdown, the writing really takes a more raw and personal approach and you can really see that this is writing that is coming from her very most internal thoughts and it's not meant to be a very pretty story, it's meant to be very emotional. One thing I reflected on as I was reading this book was how many times we look at academics or artists and people who have achieved great works of art such as novels or such as paintings. Uh, Beethoven, Van Gogh, all these people have experienced some kind of mental breakdown as they were producing these works of art and I think it really reflects how art is a way to express your most painful and deepest and most rawest feelings that can't be expressed in any other way. Esther, the main character in this book, is actually a reflection of Sylvia Plath herself. Sylvia Plath also experienced suicidal depression and in this book I could see a lot of parallels between Esther's life and Sylvia Plath's life. And I really appreciate this edition, the 50th anniversary edition, because in the back of the book it gives a lengthy summary about the life of Sylvia Plath and the hard times that she was going through and how her experiences were really similar to the ones that Esther went through as well. I won't give any spoilers, but I thought the ending was highly satisfactory and I thought it wrapped up everything really well and it really left me feeling emotionally touched. I felt like I could relate to Esther. I felt like I could relate to her pain as through the way that she was expressing herself in her writing. I felt like the way she thought about things in her head was very similar to the way that I experience and think about things in my head as well. So I could really relate to this writing style. Again, Rose didn't connect to the writing style, so I know some people won't enjoy it. However, I did, and I feel like people who are really into literary fiction, as I am, will also really enjoy this. For example, if you're really interested in authors such as Margaret Atwood, you would really enjoy The Bell Jar as well. Since it is a work of literary fiction, there's also a lot of underlying themes and metaphors and allegories sprinkled throughout the book that really add another element of beauty to the writing style. This is the type of book that would be really enjoyable to study in a literature class where you can really focus on each chapter and dig through the metaphors and the illusions and themes and what's not said but what's hidden between the lines that's something i really enjoy and i know not everybody is interested in a book that's not as straightforward and plot driven or character driven but that's something that's really interesting to me and that's something that i actually look for in the books that i read i love this book i loved how it's a first-hand experience into the life of a woman who's experiencing a mental breakdown the writing was gripping and relatable and the emotions expressed in this book really clearly express the complexities of the human psyche. Not only that, but this novel is actually a bold feminist voice in an era where this type of literature would be really taboo. The things that are said and promoting of women academics is something that should be praised and 
really noticed about in this book. I ended up giving this 4 out of 5 stars. I actually don't give out 5 star ratings frequently at all. So if I rate something 4 stars, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. It just means that it didn't reach the wow factor that I look for in a 5 star book. But as a 4 star book, I would highly recommend this. And I look forward to hearing about your thoughts that you've had on this book as well. I didn't give any spoilers, so I would appreciate if you don't give any spoilers in the comments below. But discussions about themes or discussions about the metaphor of the bell jar, I would be highly interested in conversing with you all in the comments. Anyway, so that is Feather's review. I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned tomorrow for Olive's video and stay tuned on Saturday for another video from me. Thanks for watching. I felt very still and very empty, the way the eye of a tornado must feel, moving dully along in the middle of a surrounding hullabaloo. USA Today says, it is this perfectly wrought prose and the freshness of Plath's voice in the bell jar that make this book enduring in its appeal.